listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Well, hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your dog-related business to a healthy six-figure per year profit. Now, today on the show, I'm excited because we've got a different type of expert. We've never had anyone address this on our show. We're going to be talking about Yellow Page Advertising with one of the world's most foremost experts on Yellow Page Advertising, Barry Marr. And so stay with us because we're going to come back and we're going to get a ton of great information. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Buster. You're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition, I guarantee it. Petco, with healthy pets go. Enter the code SFDB10. SFDB, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. Whether they're big, small, hairy, or whatever, you're going to need gear for your feet. And Kids Foot Locker's got all the great shoes and gear that'll get you in the game. Go to kidsfootlocker.com. Enter the code AFSIX1KF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFSIX2KF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at kidsfootlocker.com. And cover those funky feet. Would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website PetLifeRadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Welcome to PMS, Pet Marketing Strategies for the Petpreneur on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Karen Barnett, PMS. I know it's a bit of a strange sounding name, but believe me, there's nothing more strange than a marketer going into the pet business and doesn't know marketing, marketing strategy, or how to negotiate the web, social media, Google, Facebook, search engine optimization, and traditional marketing, PR, advertising, how to build a pet business, or have a business plan. So how do you get into the world of pet marketing and get the word out there about your business? Stay tuned to PMS, Pet Marketing Strategies for the Petpreneur. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and so in today's call, I'm super excited because uh, like I teased it with in the beginning, we've got an expert, uh, the type of expert we haven't had on the show before. And so uh, with us today, we've got Yellow Page expert Barry Marr. So I want to give you a big welcome and, and thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Ty. I appreciate it. And so, uh, like I always tell people uh, that are listening to the show, one of the benefits of listening to the show is uh, we kind of go outside of the industry. You are not a pet industry guy like some of the people we've had on our show. And so we've gone out of the industry to find an expert. And uh, your expertise really relates heavily to a lot of people listening to this show. A lot of our listeners use Yellow Pages. I know that because I search Yellow Pages in every town that I'm in. And uh, based on what I've seen, I'm willing to bet that most people can use your expertise. But why don't we start off by having you introduce yourself, who you are, kind of your expertise, uh, and what you've done in the industry. 
Okay, well, my name is Barry Marr. Uh, I've been in advertising most of my adult life. Uh, my yellow page expertise comes from actual experience in the industry. I was the, the top salesperson for a, a whole company called GTE a few years ago, uh, later became Verizon. Uh, then I became a consultant to the industry, a consultant to people that advertise in the industry. I wrote uh, what's still the best-selling book on this subject, but now in its third printing called Getting the Most from Yellow Page Advertising. Uh, I did the, the marketing yearbooks for Prentice Hall, uh, and now I, I work as a consultant on management, sales, communication, marketing issues. Okay. And so one thing that I, I'm willing to bet that a lot of people are thinking right off the bat is, you know, this is 2011, I'm using the internet, the heck with Yellow Page Advertising. Let me ask you, Barry, point blank, does Yellow Page Advertising actually work? Well, yellow page advertising, strangely enough, still does work. As you say, you check it every time you go into a strange town, right? You check the, the yellow mm -hmm. pages, and you're probably checking under your particular industry to see what's going on there, but you usually find ads there. Mm -hmm. And some of these people don't have a clue what they're doing. Some of these people will advertise in anything. Anybody walks in the door, they're going to buy a little bit of advertising, and it may be a lot of advertising in it. Some of these people know to the penny how well their advertising is working because they track their advertising and they track it religiously. So, yeah, people are still using Yellow Pages, and they're using Yellow Pages in great numbers. Now, does it have the, amount, the kind of references that it used to get? Not quite, no. But the references are still very, very significant, and in order to get the people that are using the directory, you've got to be in there. Gotcha, okay. And so, uh, well, let me ask you this. People that have purchased Yellow Page advertising in the past, they've, uh, you know, they, they're very familiar with using the Yellow Pages sales rep. Are these guys good? Are these guys looking out for our best interest? Uh, <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> these people are commissioned salespeople. Some of them are pretty good at what they do. Most of them aren't that great when it comes to designing you a great program. They're doing maybe seven, eight calls a day. They've got all kinds of stuff they're selling, not just Yellow Pages, but all kinds of other things. They weren't selected for their design expertise. If they do have any, it's some they picked up, possibly even on their own. And the other thing is they may design five, six, seven, eight ads a day, many of which may be your competitors' ads. Their ads tend to be very, very much the same. No, you can't rely on them to get a great ad. You know, in mentioning that, obviously we need an ad that looks really great, but what about content? What's more important? Does the ad need to look good? Does it need to have the right content? Where do you stand on that? Yes, it needs to look good and it needs to have the right content. First of all, the ad has to get itself noticed, right? You're competing with page after page sometimes of other ads all selling the exact same thing. If you look just like, if your ad looks just like their ads, everybody else's ads, it's just pick them. Why should I call one ad as opposed to another? So you've got to have an ad that stands out visually, first of all. Then when you get their attention, you've got to have an ad that sells you and tells them everything they need to know about you, both of those things. And so you know, standing out visually, what kind of aspects of an ad are going to make it stand out visually? Are we talking bold text, images? Are we talking flames coming out? of? The, I mean, what are we talking that's going to make it stand out? Flames would be good. Flames would be good. But that's pretty difficult to do in the yellow pages. Uh, first of all, you're talking. You want a great image for the ad. So the overall look of the ad has to be has to be excellent. Okay, has to be in in context with the image that you're setting up for your business. Then, probably the most important thing you can have for your ad after the initial overall look is having a great visual. You know, and what I always say is, you've got a picture that's worth a thousand words. Put it in there. If you don't have one that's worth a thousand words. Find one that's worth a thousand words. Okay. Uh, what other copy should we include, though? I mean, obviously, we need that nice visual if we've got it, but uh, what other copy should be in there? Everything. Okay. First of all, you've got to have selling copy in your ad. Most yellow page ads are pretty good about description. They're at the end of selling you the biggest ad he can possibly sell you, the yellow page rep will sit down with you and say, okay, we're going to design an ad for you right now. What's the name of your business? And you tell him the name, and he puts that across the top of the ad. What's the phone number? He'll put that in the box at the bottom of the ad. What's your address? He'll put that down underneath there. You take Visa, MasterCard, that gets in there. And then he asks you, you know, what do you carry? What do you do? All the specific descriptive things about your business are usually going to get into that ad, your hours, whatever, whatever. But what doesn't get into the ad are the things that, ta that separate you from the, the competition, your unique selling proposition. Why should I call you as opposed to somebody else? 
if your ad doesn't give me a very strong reason why I should call you as opposed to one of those other ads out there, all of which give me their hours, all of which give me their location, you know, I'm just picking them. I'm just taking a guess. Maybe I picked the closest one to me. Maybe I just uh, flip a coin. Who knows? But you've got to have some really strong selling copy, and you focus that around that question. Why should I do business with you as opposed to somebody else? You know, I've been asking businesses that question for uh, many, many years now. Usually when I ask it, what I get is a blank look. If I press mm-hmm. people, then maybe they give me three to five answers. Why someone should do business with them as opposed to somebody else. The most astounding thing I've found consulting with businesses of all sizes on the yellow pages is that of those three to five answers that I manage to get out of people, sometimes none of them are in the yellow page ad and very seldom are all of them in the yellow page ad. And so let's make a, a quick little case study out of this then, you know, because uh, we're talking about, and you mentioned it, and that's exactly what I see when I go from city to city and I see different ads. You know, let's, let's take dog training, for example, and, and uh, you look at an ad and it says ABC dog training, open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, we take Visa, we take MasterCard, here's our phone number. What should that ad say? I mean, a lot of people are going to look and say, wow, that's great, you got a picture of a dog, people are going to call you, right? Maybe they do, but uh, based on what you're telling me, what type of words should be in there versus what I just laid out? Well, first of all, ABC Dog Training. How many people are going to call you because your name is ABC Dog Training? Now, maybe you've got a great reputation around town. Maybe you've got a lot of people that know you. Maybe you're doing a lot of other advertising. Yellow Pages is what they call directional advertising. Most of the advertising we do is creative advertising. You're trying to create the need. Okay, when your dog is acting up or when you've got, got yourself a new puppy, you know, you come to us. You're trying to create that need. You put it out in the newspaper, in the radio, in the TV, wherever you might put it. When they have the need, where, they're gonna, where are they going to go to find all the people that can satisfy this need, all the people that can do dog training? That's when they go either into the Internet or into the Yellow Pages. Those are both directional media. So when they get there, you're competing with everybody else selling the same thing. Is ABC, mm-hmm. is ABC the single piece of copy most likely to get them to look at your ad and read your ad and give you that call more than anything else? No, I don't else? think so. Very unlikely. Very, even if your name is Sears, you know, in the, the department store business, that's a pretty good name. But even Sears doesn't use their name as the headline for their ad. You've got to have the single piece of copy most likely to, to appeal to the people that you're trying to reach as the headline for your ad. So the the name of your ad should almost never, ever be your headline. Again, why and I, I, you as opposed to somebody else. Okay, and I don't want to breeze over that because, like I say, I don't know that I've ever seen a Yellow Page ad. Maybe I have. Maybe I just didn't notice it. But I don't think I've ever seen a Yellow Page ad to where the name of the business isn't the headline. So you're saying the headline needs to be a benefit. The headline needs to be a call to action, something like that? The headline needs to be, what I always say, is it needs to be the single piece of copy most likely to to appeal to the people you're trying to reach, the specific customers you're trying to reach out of that particular medium, out of, in this case, the yellow pages. So whatever it might be. And you know your customers better than I do. Or you better know. You know your unique, your unique selling proposition better than I do, or you better know that. You know the answer to the question, why should somebody call you as opposed to the competition better than I do? Or if you don't know it, you better find out. Or you get mm-hmm. no business being in business. And you probably won't be in business very long. If it's just a pick em choice, then the only thing you can do is buy the biggest ad possible, put the nicest picture of the nicest dog you can put in there possible, and hope for the best. (laughs) But if you give me a reason to look at your ad and then to call you, that's a whole different thing altogether. So based on what you're telling me, I'm getting the picture that that ads that you design or that you teach your clients to design probably don't look like normal yellow page ads. I mean, because we're talking, first of all, we need a headline. What's going to go under our headline? Well, the headline might be where you're linked the headline to your business. That may be where you put the business name. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. Yellow page ads can be designed a number of ways, but these things that I'm talking about are general truths. People that design good yellow page ads, this is the way they design it. When we put together getting the most from your yellow page advertising, even the first edition of the book, which is like 20 years ago, never mind the most recent, we talked to all the top graphics people in the yellow page industry. We talked to all the copy, top copy people in the yellow pages. We looked at, uh, at usage studies. We looked at call studies. We could see the ads that drew the most. And we got the best possible information out there. I thought I was going to knock off the book in a couple of quick months because I thought I was already an expert on the yellow pages. It turned out when we started doing the research, there, were, there was a whole lot we didn't know that we had to put in the book. So 
there are yellow page ads out there that are being done correctly right now, but there are a whole lot of ads that aren't being done correctly. And the ads that aren't being done correctly are the ads that got ABC dog training. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. why should I call ABC as opposed to XYZ dog training? So the most important, two most important things to have in the ad. Okay, you've got to have a strong visual if you've got the room for it, and if you've got a tiny little ad, you don't necessarily have that. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a decent side ad, you, ad, you want to have a strong visual or a strong look to the ad, and you want to have a strong headline. Now, at that point, where you put different elements of copy just depends on the size of the ad, the shape of the ad, the way things work out, and it's, it's, it's always a, a bargaining thing. If you make this bigger, you make that smaller kind of thing. But very often, after you put your headline in there, you may want to put your name. You may want to link your name to the headline, which, of course, is the piece of copy you most want to be associated with. Then after you've got some strong selling copy, then you can start talking about your services, your hours, your location. Now, if your location is a, is a particular strength, if you're the only, you're looking to draw customers from a 10-mile, 15-mile radius, and you're the only dog trainer within that 15-mile radius, uh, you want to highlight your location. That might even be your headline under those circumstances. Okay. Most of the time it isn't going to be, but if you, if you had a unique situation like that where the, your strongest selling point was your location, that might well be your headline. Uh, hmm. So again, the, the size and the, and the position of the various elements of the ad depend on, depend on your particular business. Okay. Now we're talking about getting a lot of stuff in there. Let me ask you, should I use every bit of ad space that I'm paying for? Sure, if you want to make sure that nobody reads the ad. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yellow page ads should be as readable as possible. You're competing with all those other ads. You want to grab the most visibility you can. You want it to be as appealing as it possible. You want the most appealing ad on that page. Okay? To do that, you've got to have white space. You've got to have, it's got to be easy to read. I always say you want to make your ad as readable as a billboard. Now, you've got to put all that stuff in that we just talked about. So, again, there's always a trade-off here. You know, you've got to get that information in there, but you've got to get it in there as readably as you possibly can, which means you have to, may have to hone down things. You may have to use some general terms rather than listing every specific service you've got. You may have a general term that covers three or four of them, gives you a little bit more room that way. But you've got to make it as readable as possible. Nobody wants to wade through dense paragraphs of copy. Now, there is a theory out there. Uh, and there are there are actually a couple of people that are out there promoting it as yellow page experts, quote unquote. It comes from direct marketing, and it says that you want to fill that ad with as much copy as you possibly can. That people will read that copy, mm-hmm. and they will, if you're in direct marketing, okay. And you say if I'm selling out, if I'm sending out 200,000 pieces of mail that says uh, cuckoo clocks, two dollars. I'm looking mm-hmm. to get about 2% of the people that are actually ready to buy cuckoo clocks when they see my mailer. And if they're ready to buy cuckoo clocks and they say two, cuckoo clocks, $2 on the top of that ad, they're going to read through that dense copy because they're going to think, well, this is too good to be true. So they're mm-hmm. going to read every paragraph of that and then maybe they send me the $2, maybe they don't. Okay. And the Yellow Pages isn't like that. In the Yellow Pages, I don't have to wade through your dense copy. I don't have to make the effort to plow through an ad that's not appealing. There's too many other ads right there that I can go to. I'll just call, look at somebody else and call him. Unless you can come up with a headline strong enough to get me to read that, which in most cases is going to be very, very difficult. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because I've studied yellow page advertising in the past, and I've seen exactly what you're talking about. To our marketers are encouraging people to, you know, write, uh, you know, write full copy. You know, on the top it says, you know seven deadly mistakes that you're making with your dog right now and then a whole bunch of copy to try to get a free report. Are you saying that's maybe not the best thing to do in a, in a Yellow Pages ad? I'm saying that's called the ugly ad and it can work if you've got a great cop piece of headline there that'll get people to do that. And if somebody else isn't doing it and if it hasn't been done to death, which it has been in many, many markets, where mm. people are going to say, hey, I know about suddenly Devin Miss deadly mistakes because I saw it under plumbing, I saw it under air conditioning, I see it every time I look in the yellow pages. I'm not going to be tricked to wade through the seven deadly mistakes of dog training. Now, if nobody else has done it and you've got a good, strong headline and it can work in your market, it can certainly work. But even when you do that, still want to make sure that all that copy you put in there is as concise, as, 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 as to the point as possible, and you want to do it with things like bold copy, little bits of bold copy. You might want to do it with bullets. Things that they can still scan through that ad quickly and find the key points uh, mm-hmm. without having to wade through that whole thing if they don't want to. 
Okay. Well, this is excellent stuff. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, I want to find out from you how big our ads need to be. And there was one thing you said at the beginning of this conversation that we're having about some people know down to a penny the return on their investment. I want to figure out how we can do that to where if I invest X amount of dollars, I want to know how much I get back. So stay right with us, folks. We're going to find out some great information when we come back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash SFDB to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. I play tennis because I love to, but inside, I want to win. Take away the court, the net. I might not be a player, but I'll always be a competitor. Lady Foot Locker understands that. Lady Foot Locker, the first to carry Adidas off-court shoes and the gear that goes with them. If you play your best, there's no regret. Lady Foot Locker, one place, every woman. Go to LadyFootLocker.com and enter the code AFSIX1LF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFSIX. 2LF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at ladyfootlocker.com. There's a movement afoot, shoebuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop shoebuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. Shoebuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code SFDB at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at Shoebuy.com. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Okay, and we're back, and we're talking with Yellow Page expert Barry Marr, and uh, giving some great information on how to structure this ad, how to make it look different, you know, how to how to come across different and not look like every other ad. And one of the things that goes along with that is ad size. You know, what size ad should we be running? Well, you know, like everything else in Yellow Pages and in marketing for that matter, it depends. Now, you can waste a, you can waste a fortune basically buying more advertising than you need. Your Yellow Page rep is going to sell you as much advertising as he possibly can. He's going to sell you the biggest ad or she's going to sell you the biggest ad and as many books as they can possibly get you to buy it in. Uh, but you can also waste money in yellow pages by not buying an ad big enough to be effective. So ads are placed by size and seniority. What that means is the biggest ads go first, and then among those ads that are the same size, ads that have had that size the longest get priority placement on the page and priority placement within the heading. Position is very, very important. We all tend to go to the front of the heading. We don't want to miss anything. If we don't go to the front of the heading, maybe the first ad is exactly what we wanted, right? So we all tend to go to the front of the heading so we can search through everybody that, that does whatever it is we're looking for. 
So we want to be as close to the front of the heading as possible. So you want to consider, in other words, you want to get the best pop for your buck. You want to get the get mm-hmm. close to the front of the heading as you can get for the money you're willing to spend. You don't want to overspend. So what you want to do is you want to have your rep show you where the size you're considering would be in this year's book. Now, nobody knows what's going to happen next year. Nobody knows that the ads in front of you are going to go up in size, they're going to get down in size, they're going to go out of the book altogether. And if your rep, even if your rep knew that, it's considered extremely unethical for him to tell you because then he could go to the competition and tell them what you're doing. And mm-hmm. it, would, it, would, it would entirely destroy your strategy. But what you want to have is you want to show him, I want to have him show you where the ad you're considering, the size you're considering would be in this year's book, how close it would be to the front of the heading. That'll give you a pretty good idea of where it's likely to be next year because these things tend to stay the same. Sometimes, by going just one size up, you may move several pages closer to the front of the heading. Sometimes you can cut back in size. You might not lose any position. I've seen many, many he- uh, headings where you go into the classification and there's a full page ad in there. Well, the mm-hmm. next size down might be a half page ad. If that full page ad went down to a three quarter page ad, they'd be saving 25%, just about 25% on their uh, advertising bill, and they'd probably, in all likelihood, still have the first position in the heading. Have him show you where your ad would be in this year's directory, and then realize that that doesn't guarantee you anything. It's going to give you a pretty good estimation of where it's likely to be next year. And you probably have a better idea of your competition and how likely they are to be aggressive and to go up in size or to be cutting back. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned something earlier, you know, that they're going to try to sell us on different books and different directories. That's a great question. I get, uh, I don't know how many yellow page different types of uh, books come to my house. How do we know which one to buy in? Well, that's where we get to tracking the advertising. And tracking the advertising is very important. Now, the first year, when somebody comes to you and it's a new directory and you've never heard of it, I mean, the question I always ask is, you know, why should I buy into this directory? I've never heard of it. Nobody else here has ever heard of it. You know, if your rep can somehow prove to you that they're getting usage and in believable figures that that they're actually getting usage or likely to get usage in the new directory, you might try putting something in there, something small, so you can test your advertising. Only if they've proven it to you. Not, you know, we did this in Cleveland and it worked great there. Well, you were in the phone company in Cleveland. Are you the phone company here? You know, what's <laughs> going on here? Uh, and then once you do put something small there, you want to track your advertising there and track all your advertising. Now, if you're in several different books, the easiest way to track your advertising is to simply ask one question when people call you. If people call you before they come into the business, and in most cases, if you're a dog trainer, people aren't going to walk in off the streets, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to call you first. If you're selling pet food, it might be a little bit different. Then you may have to do the survey in person. But if people always call you first, the easiest question in the world is, what page of the directory did you find our phone number on? Mm -hmm. That's the key question, because as soon as you ask that question, that's going to tell you almost everything you need to know about your advertising. Okay? It's going to tell you what heading they found you under because you know what page. It's going to tell you what directory they found you in because you're not going to be on the same page in different directories. It's going to tell you whether they looked at the classified ad, the big ad, the big display ad you had, or the little in-column listing alphabetically under your name. If you're getting all the calls alphabetically under your name, why are you paying for that big ad? Mm -hmm. It's going to tell you whether they found you in the white pages or the yellow pages. It's great if they're looking you up in the white pages because then they're looking specifically for you and you don't have any competition under ABC dog training. And right. There's A, B, D dog training, you know, it's very likely, unlikely of that. So it's going to tell you whether it's the, what directory, what heading, what spot in the heading, and whether it's white pages and the yellow pages. And then you just record that and you see where your ads are coming from, or where your calls are coming from. And then next year when the rep comes in there and tells you, you know, this directory we put you in last year, it works great. Everybody's so happy with it. Well, say, you know, yeah, we're pretty happy with it. It got us three calls all year. That's not happy enough to renew this year. Have you ever tried anything else uh, as far as tracking? I mean, have you ever done anything as, uh, as in-depth as putting different phone numbers in different books? I mean, does that kind of stuff work? Yeah, absolutely works, and it's a great strategy. There are different strategies. You can put a little tracking number in each ad, and that becomes a little bit more difficult. But you simply ask people, if people are calling you out of the directory, they've got it open right in front of them. And it's the easiest thing to ask them. Well, we give it, could you give me the number in the top right-hand corner? Easiest way, of course, is a dedicated number that's in no place else but your yellow page ad. Uh, that gets a little complicated if you're in a lot of different directories because then you need a lot of different numbers. It also doesn't tell you 
whether it's the whether you know it's the white pages or it's the classified ad, because the number is going to be different from the the uh, in column listing is uh, from the display ad or from the white pages. So you need different numbers and all those to to gauge all of those things. One of the things that very often happens is nowadays the directory companies will very often put a particular tracking number in your ad, and oh, they really? charge you for this, and they'll give you the exact call count, and that's great. That's one of the reasons I sometimes recommend that somebody try a new directory. If the directory isn't in the area, if it isn't established, but the rep makes a very, very credible point, and he's making he's got a lot of good reasons why you should buy this. So say, well, maybe I'll try that size ad if you can give me a tracking number, and I will pay for it if I get X number of calls out of this thing and try and bargain with them. Unfortunately, the people most likely to bargain back with you are the people you least likely to want to do business with because they're desperate. <laughs> That's why they're bargaining with you. But... You know, you might be able to get a situation where they put a tracking number in that ad, uh, phone number, dedicated phone number that's no place else, and you pay according to the number of calls you're getting. Oh, really? Now, that's a great idea. You're saying that some will do that, but maybe not all books are going to be open to that? No, not all books, definitely. And the more you want to be in a book, the less likely they are to do that, to be real honest. But <laughs> even the top directory companies will very often, they all have programs where they will put a dedicated number in your ad, and they will give you an exact call count on that. And uh, I don't want to brush over this part because I think this is one of the biggest pieces. I'm constantly shocked when people are spending, you know, yellow page money. You know, it might be uh, a thousand, might be five thousand, ten thousand dollars a year or more. And if you say, okay, how much did that return for you? And they have no clue. You know, it seems absolutely insane because no one else would do that. I mean, you wouldn't, uh, you would invest your money in the stock market and then have no clue if you got your money back. You would invest your money in real estate and then have no clue. But then it seems like people do this all the time with yellow pages or other print advertising to where they put in hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and then have no clue if the money's even coming back. Is that Thank something you've you found quite a bit? Absolutely. I, I speak at conventions all over the country, and and I talk to advertisers. You know, we have and plus we have clients that we work with. I actually met an attorney who shall remain nameless, who is, who is spending twenty eight thousand dollars a month. A month. A month. Holy cow. A month. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Holy guy. Personal personal injury attorney. Twenty eight thousand dollars a month, and wasn't tracking his advertising. It was too wow. much trouble. Yeah, too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'd attract his advertising for $14,000 a month. It wouldn't be too much trouble for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and maybe that's the biggest mistake, but have you ever seen people make other, you know, other big mistakes when they're trying to do yellow page advertising? Well, one of the things that happens uh, a lot of times, the directory companies are trying to save money. So you want to make sure you're always getting a proof, always getting a proof, no matter what. If you've got a display ad, they won't proof the in-column ads. But most of the time we're talking, if we're talking significant money, you've got a display ad. Because I've seen all kinds of things. We had, speaking of attorneys, we had one that was actually listed under reptiles. (laughs) uh, Yeah. I mean, you can argue whether that was the appropriate classification or not. But he wasn't happy with it. Oh, that's funny. And so, uh, wow, like I said, this is great information. Now, I'm assuming you know a lot of this can even be applied to to other stuff like money mailers or newspaper advertising. Have you found that a lot of the principles hold true? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we sell, there are people buying copies of getting the most from your yellow page advertising who don't even advertise in the yellow pages because we have a very large section in the middle of the ad about uh, ad design and how to have the most effective ads possible. So a lot of these things are appropriate for virtually any form of advertising. And the sad thing is how many small business people don't really know anything about marketing and they're buying their advertising and it's a crapshoot. And they're Mm -hmm. hoping some of it works, but, you know, they don't really know. And speaking of which, so if uh, any of our listeners are interested in uh, checking out your book or your services or other products or services that you have, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find you? Well, they can find me at www.barrymar.com, which is www.barrymar.com. Or they can find the book, Getting the Most from Your Yellow Page Advertising, on Amazon. I would be shocked if there's a yellow page advertiser out there that couldn't benefit from the book because we spent a lot of time getting the best possible information and putting it in there. Well, and this has been some great information. You know, I get the feeling we could go on for hours and hours, but uh, our time is running out. But I want to say a huge thank you. And again, you know, as I do with almost every show, I hope that you as the listener have been, uh, you know, taking notes because maybe you're advertising the yellow pages. Maybe you're just doing newspapers or money mailers. Wherever you are, there's principles of what Barry shared today that, uh, that are applicable to you. Even if it's just on your website, you know, about getting the right headline and getting the right calls to action. 
And so, in any case, like I say, I want to say a huge thank you to you, Barry. Thanks for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me, Ty. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a show, just email me at ty at petliferadio.com or head over to my website, sixfiguredogbusiness.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.